So let's begin with the presentation that I have for all of you here, which is the Android for Beginners. So the agenda that we have for the presentation is, we have dis distributed th this presentation into four phases. During the first phase, we'll be talking about the Android overview. Then we'll be talking about ma the main building blocks of an any Android application. Then we'll be talking about the very first Android application, how you can build your first Android application. And then uh, the, we'll take more into the first phase four. So let's give you an, an uh, overview about Android. So before I begin with the Android overview, I have a poll question for all of you here. Does anybody know which was the first Android powered device here? So you can see, all of you can see here the poll question on your windows. Which one is the very first pow Android powered device available to all of you? So is it the HTC Hero? It, is it the HTC G1? Is it the Motorola, Motorola Droid? So you can all cast your votes here. So I think majority of the people have casted their votes here and uh, majority of uh, the people are going with Motorola Droid. The answer to it, uh, the question that I had asked was, it is the HTC G1, which was the very first Android power device. It, it was running on Android OS 1.5. So that is the correct answer to it. So what exactly Android is? Does anybody, uh, if uh, if I go and ask, what is Android? So what is, uh, uh, if I talk about Android, it is an open software platform for mobile application development. It is not just an OS. It is a complete stack of an operating system, the middleware, the various applications that are housed in the Android OS. And it is uh, the OS which is powered by the Linux operating system. And the application development for the Android is in Java. And the complete Android setup is actually governed by the Apache 2 license. Let's, let me quickly tell you what is, uh, uh, when we talk about Android application development, we have an Android stack that we need to take care of. So as you can see, the Android complete Android stack is divided into five layers here. At the base is the Linux kernel. Above that, we have the hardware abstraction layer. Above that, we have the various libraries and the Android runtime that we have. Then we have the application framework. Then we have the applications. So I'll go uh, with this process. I'll go bottoms up. So when I talk about the Linux kernel, so this is the base of the stack, and it is the kernel. It includes the various memory management programs like the security settings, the power management software, and other hard hardware drivers that we have at this level. So how has Android evolved? Android has evolved from A to J. Here you can see the very first Android commercial version that was launched in the market was the Cupcake, then it was the Donut, then it was the Eclair. Then we had the Froyo version, then it is the Gingerbread. So this is the version that is very much predominantly running on the Android enabled devices here. Then we had the Honeycomb which was actually completely targeted for for all the uh, tablets and then we have the ice cream sandwich which majority of the devices are upgrading to and the very last is the jelly bean so this is the very uh, latest android version that is available in the market so uh, dipti has a question here what is service i think i have cleared you all, uh, told you all what exactly is a service if you are doing some background tasks if you are doing some extensive operations that need to be done in the background then you will be using a service for it himanshu has asked me a question so if i kill an application do the services associated with it gets killed automatically yes himanshu that is true all these services that you have associated with the application automatically get killed i have a poll question for all of you here i talked about the runtime environment that is used by android here so can you all just take a look at the poll question here so what is the runtime environment that is used by android it is the is it jvm or is it the dvm so you can all cast your votes here on the chat window. So if I go on to file, I go on to new, I go on to new Android application project. Now it, it is asking me a variety of things. It is asking for an applic application name. I'll say sample, I'll say Edureka. As soon as I do that, it automatically generates the project name here. Then we have the com.example.sample.edureka. It is the package naming. 
all of you who might be familiar with Java, uh, if I talk about package naming, it is just grouping the various applications into a single category. And I click on next here. Or missed. Here you have two options here. One is the build SDK and minimum SDK required. So when I talk about the build SDK, the optimum level that you should use is the 2.2 build level here and then the minimum required you can keep it as 2.2 and then you click on next here it gives you the various images that you want to use your application I'll choose none I click on next it says create an activity which says blank activity I'll create a blank activity here it asks me for the activity name I'll just name it as main activity I'll keep the name unchanged here and I do a finisher as soon as I do a finisher you can see I'll be having the sample Eureka here which gets generated automatically in the project. So once I do a run here, as you can see here, this is the hello world application. This is the very basic sam sample application, hello world application that I've just showed you all. Siddharth is asking me a question, are all the apps available in Play Store developed in this way? Yes, Siddharth, we actually do application development like this only.